This video has been sponsored by Geekom. For the past few months, I've used a 2013 Mac Pro to run plenty of my virtual machines running with the host OS being Windows 10 Pro. That Mac has 12 gigs of RAM, an Intel Xeon processor, and failing dual AMG Fire Pro GPUs. That was until now. Geekom were generous enough to send me one of their latest mini PC desktops known as the Mini IT13 for me to test out. And I intend to use this desktop for future virtual machines, including those of Windows and Windows Phone. So the initial specs of this device include 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 14 core 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor, one terabyte of NVMe SSD storage, and Windows 11 Pro. On the front of the PC, we have a power button, two USB-A ports, and a headphone jack. While on the back, we have from left to right, the power port, USB-C with HDMI under it, Ethernet, two USB-A ports, and another USB-C port with HDMI also under it, allowing for two displays to be connected. On the right, we have a Kensington security slot, and on the left, we have an SD card reader. A total of two cables are provided with this device. You have the power cable, and you also have an HDMI cable. There is also an instruction manual which you can use to help set up the device. When powering on this mini PC for the very first time, we obviously get greeted with the typical Windows 11 out-of-box experience setup, which for obvious reasons I'm going to skip for this video. So now that we're at the desktop, I've enabled dark mode because I simply prefer it that way, and we're going to be testing out a couple of virtual machines. So the first VM we're testing is Windows 10 Mobile. So I used Microsoft Visual Studio 2015 to load the VM, which uses Hyper-V as the backend. There's quite a bit of lag when interacting with the virtual device, but that appears to be more so an issue with the actual VM than that of the mini PC's hardware. But otherwise, it is mostly a seamless experience when testing out the last version of Windows Phone and its built-in applications. Next up, I tested Windows 10 version 22H2 in VMware Workstation with 8GB of virtual RAM and two processor threads. For basic tasks, there was a slight delay in the OS, however, it would not be anything serious enough to cause a headache, such as opening programs or animations. With that said, I would personally not advise doing any heavy-duty operations on the VM, such as gaming, especially since the built-in GPU is integrated into the processor. But still, it works enough for me. Now that we have completed all the virtual machine demonstrations, I proceeded to do a test of Minecraft Bedrock Edition, which I've tested out thanks to my current Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription. What I discovered is at times, the graphics can be slightly laggy, but not as serious to the point where the game is unplayable. Needless to say, there's only integrated graphics in this computer, which isn't too bad. Let's finish up with some Geekbench tests. What I did was run a CPU benchmark test, and the result as you can see is a single core score of 2387 and a multi-core score of 11,120. All things considered, I would say that's a decent result. I also ran a GPU benchmark test and achieved an OpenCL score of 16165. I will be including both results in the description. A Geekbench test is only one part of checking the performance of a computer. As such, I also conducted two Cinebench tests in order to check the performance of the processor. The result for the single core processor was 102 points, which would put it on a ranking close to Apple's silicon chips, specifically the 8-core Apple M1 with 112 points, while the 20-core M1 Ultra chip and a 10-core M1 Max chip both achieved 113 points. As for the multi-core results, this device scored 647 points, ranking at 7 compared to a few AMD Ryzen processors, while the top ranking was also Apple's M1 Ultra again, with a score of 1625. If you would like to purchase one of these Geekom mini PCs directly, feel free to go on Geekom's website. This mini PC does come in different configurations depending on your specific needs, and discount codes will be included in the description of this video for Australian, USA, and UK buyers. It is also important to mention that Geekom's mini PC has recently landed in the Australian market. So there's that. So this was a look at the Geekom mini IT13 PC, which I'll be using for most of my future Windows projects. 
Thank you all for watching and see you all in my next video.